So finally the parts are in for the Evo, we obviously we had to overnight these from Japan, um, you can see here we've got some Tommy parts, we've got some fluid dampener, kidney race parts, uh, brand new modified oil pump, uh, you see in the last video that Manly Rods went in, if you ain't watched that go back watch that video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what we've got to make this engine a little bit better from the last build, you can see here we've got baffle kit from Tommy, this fluid dampener is going to help massively so I'm going to unbox these now, enjoy the video, thank you for watching. Right, so now you've seen the parts, I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail why we've got them. So we've got this Kigley Racing Oil Pressure Regulator for the head. Um, this was an important part that I wanted to fit to this head. This is the stock one that comes with these engines. And if you know these 4G63 engines, you'll know that they suffer from oil pressure issues a lot. Now, if you see a lot of the failures with these engines, it'll always be oil pressure related. Never normally like anything broken. It's normally uh, a bearing spun, oil pressure has lost on the oil pump, or it's lost in the sump. You know, there's, there's sloshing around when it's hard cornering obviously we in four wheel drive puts a massive strain as well because the grip levels um so we have this oil pressure regulator so it's a billet one it's quite expensive the way it is actually um, you can see in here it's got a regulator inside that allows its oil into different channels and basically what this does is this regulates the oil going into the lifters now these lifters were three millimeter oversized lifters the stock ones get stuck so we went for the higher oil pressure lifters you can see they run on a roller rocker system so this just replaces that and allows less oil pressure into the head so there's more oil in the sump and less in the head and that's where we want the oil we want the oil down in the sump so we want the oil to get up through the oil pump straight into the head and straight back down again if we've got a ton of oil up inside this head and not a lot down in the sump that's when we're going to have bearing issues so that's why we're replacing that when i take it off i show you the channels and everything behind there i'm going to pull these cams out now quickly um, because obviously I want to clean up this head, make sure there's no swarf inside this head, make sure it's perfectly clean for going back onto the new engine. Um, we're not going to take the valves or anything out because there's no need, we're just giving it a quick clean over. <laughs> Right, so with them camshafts removed, you can see a lot more of the valve train in here. These engines obviously run on a roller rocker system for a low friction setup. And you can see we've upgraded the lifters to the three millimeter oversized type. And uh, these are brand new inside there. Um, you can see inside there's a lot, lot more oil can get in there. And uh, these have done no mileage at all, but obviously I went to clean out the head. You can see we've got the titanium retainers as well uh, and upgraded uh, spring setup. So you can see these titanium retainers and the valve setup that we've got in there is a single lock system. Uh, when I turn it over, you'll see we've got upgraded uh, inlet and exhaust valves in there. And uh, just fact, basically, we're just going to clean up this head. And at the same time, we're going to remove this oil pressure regulator just in case there's any swarf inside there. And it's a perfect time to replace it with this lovely, nice billet unit. So looking forward to that. Looking very pretty on the top there.
So there you go, that's the two removed. So obviously this is the stock one and it actually comes with a gasket. You can see here, it's a lot different unit compared to the one we've just fitted. This one's got a oil pressure regulator inside it. You can see like it would be on an oil pump and it's a lovely billet unit. One thing that they do say in this is to not use sealant it's not required and not recommended, which is quite unusual for a metal on metal surface like this, but I'm gonna go with obviously what the manufacturers say. Um, the stock unit has a gasket, nice fit gasket, which is what I would have thought it would have used. And um, if you're wondering, is it gonna regulate the oil pressure to the head? Well, it's gonna regulate the oil pressure to the actual lifters itself. So you can see here, this is the two channels for the lifters and it regulates that to around 15 psi but the camshafts and everything else gets the same amount of oil in it just stops the um, lifters pumping up too much and all the oil being inside the head and not being able to get down in the sump um, we ain't running like a big wing sump or a dry sump on this system so it's absolutely perfect for high revs and that's the reason we're using it so the head has been thoroughly steam cleaned now you can see there's no oil or nothing in there so make sure any of the grit or swarf or anything that's been inside this head Head while it's been off uh, or obviously down to the bearing damages itself um, and I've blasted out all the oil ways in the head um, I've went over it with an airline and blasted everything out and uh, it's absolutely spotless now as clean as I'm gonna get it without vapor blasting it obviously don't need to take these springs out uh, you can see inside these lifters now as well why if the oil pressure isn't regulated it will literally just flood the head so you can see the size of them in there the ports inside there so the next box we've got to unbox and you can see here this is from Tommy and it's a slicing baffle set it's for the Evo 4 to 7 as the 8 to 9 is slightly different um, I thought it was all gonna be in Japanese but they've kindly put English on there as well and as you'd expect from Tommy is absolutely the best aftermarket quality you're going to get with these sort of companies the japanese parts are amazing you do pay the premium for them but they're never going to have an issue with them so you can see as the name suggests this is a baffle set and it's a scraper set so basically it's going to stop the oil from spraying around inside the crankcase cause an excess breather and they'll get that oil down inside the sump where we want it to get the oil pickup pipe so you can see here very very nicely manufactured and where we've got the stroker kit on this engine we've got to slightly modify it just to fit on this car uh, which is no problem uh, but we're going to get to fit in that before we fit the head so we're just going to got all the ga gaskets that we need we even got bolts um, and the instructions are not just in japanese luckily enough we have a nice english set um, very easy to fit anyway so it's not really a problem um, but it's just talk readings etc slightly different in japan and uh We've got all the torque settings. You know that I love torque settings. If you watch this channel a lot, everything has to be done properly. So you can see here all the different torque settings that I love to use. Um, and the baffle plate just gets bolted down to 22 newton meters. This is the fitment of it. Very easy. So we're gonna get to doing that now before we get the head on. So the baffle itself is pretty easy to fit. Um, I've just noticed the, the reason why you have to modify it for the stroker kit. So basically that slicing baffle goes down the side of the crankshaft here. And then this top part just goes over the top of the other existing baffle. And you can see here, this is where the oil dipstick comes through. And then they just give you some nice bolts that come with a kit, brand new Japanese bolts. You know, I like these sort of things, all fresh, zinc coated. My favorite. So I noticed that when I'm turning over this stroker kit, so I'm just gonna torque it down quickly, and then I'll show you what I mean. The actual slicer itself down here needs adjustment. It needs opening up so that the crank can actually turn. So with the baffle kit all mocked up, obviously we've got a stroker crankshaft on this, so it's slightly different to the stock 4G63 crankshaft. And uh, as a side effect of that, this uh, baffle has to be modified slightly. So you can see inside there, just down there, try and focus in quickly. Um, the baffle actually touches the rod slightly as we turn the engine over. So you can see as you come round, and just touches it there. So obviously that would lock up the engine and smash the baffle to pieces. So we've got to open up that passageway just there, either side of the rod, maybe five mil, I'll measure it, find out, open that up and we should be good to go. That's about the only part that I've found that's actually touching. You can see the rest of it fits absolutely spot on. So we're gonna get that back off, modify it quickly, and uh, get this back on. Make sure the clearances are perfectly in spec, and uh, we should be good to go. 
Right, so I'm just currently just measuring the thickness of the rod or the width of the rod so I can get an accurate measurement of how much I've got to take off the baffle. Um, and I think it's around two mil that I need to take off, which is a tiny amount. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much Tommy actually allowed for clearance on the baffle itself. So just got the Dremel out with a nice sanding disc and uh, just going to machine that out slightly. Maybe two mil I'm going to do at first, see if that clears, and then check the measurements with a feeler gauge between what Tommy had actually done and uh, what I'm getting. So I'm going to get on with that now. So as you can see here, I've just opened up this number two rod um, to about 22 mil. I've just measured it with a vernier um, and I'm just gonna open up number one rod as well to the same amount. Um, you can see there's a lot more clearance between the two. I just wanted to show comparison side by side to show you how much I had to take off. And that clears the rod perfectly. So I'm gonna get them both opened up to the same amount, get a feeler gauge in there, make sure there's a nice bit of clearance at 8,000 RPM. And then we're about to bolt this back on. So there we go, that's the uh, baffle slicer all modified. Perfectly uh, 22 and a half mil on each side. Fits in there perfectly now. Just mocked it up on the engine. So it's about time we get this bolted on. So obviously with the head off, it's a no-brainer to test these valves out, make sure we've got no leaks before the head goes back on, because we don't want to have like a leak down test and work out that the valves have got uh, leaky problems or we can sort it right now. It's been sitting there for about half an hour now with the fuel in it. Basically this is just petrol, if you don't know, um, and I'll just put a little bit of dye in it as well just so that I can uh, tell if it, if it does start pouring out, but it hasn't, there's absolutely no um, moisture anywhere. You can see on the inlet side and the exhaust side, been sitting here for a long time now and there's absolutely no problems there so we've got no leaks from these valves so we're going to have proper compression inside the cylinder chamber um, and as i say it's a no-brainer to do this before we put the head on just to make sure everything's perfect you can see here the head's obviously been skimmed so there's no need to skim the head either onto the oil pumps now now you can see this is the old oil pump that come off the car you can see the slight differences obviously this is where the balancer shafts go through on the evo engine here and here so basically what we've got to do is blank them off you can see the seals in here and um, there, that one's got to come out and then we just fit in this blanking plug that sits in there like that. So this is basically what the balancer shaft delete kit consists of. A little stubby shaft that replaces the shaft on this side here. And then we've got the bung that obviously bungs off that one like I just showed you. And then we've got the blank. This blank screws in there that covers up where the balancer shaft stubby shaft goes in. And then this obviously this is the oil pump gear here. So we're gonna to get to doing that now so we can bolt this on.
Right, so it's about time this head gets bolted to this block and we can make the long block complete. So uh, we're really getting there now with this engine. Obviously we're using Cosworth parts on the uh, head side of it. So we're using Cosworth H11 head studs um, for to keep that head bolted down so we have no head lift. And then we're going with the Cosworth head gasket as well. So just prepping this cam cover to get put on with a new gasket and um, obviously we've got to put on this regulator first for the lifters and it's a shame that it gets covered up by the actual cover itself because it's a nice little bit of jewellery in there but it's doing its job regulating that oil pressure to 15 psi to them lifters. Um, it'd be interesting to see if the noise changes or if it's a little bit more noisy with this on. We'll find out. So let's get that bolted down and get this cam cover on. Right, so on to another upgrade. As you see, this is the fluid dampener. Um, if you don't know what these are, they're basically a bottom pulley. Um, they're full of fluid. They massively help um, engine harmonics. Obviously, we removed the balancer shafts on this car, um, so we need all the help we can get. And um, it stops vibrations through transmission, and hopefully it stops um, any sort of vibrations or damage through the oil pump that we had last time. Um, these are worth the weight in gold. They are expensive, but to save an engine, you know you can't really put a price on that so I'm just going to pull this out quickly it's a bit difficult one-handed 
So these are a beautifully made bit of kit. You can see here. Um, not really much to show you about it. It's just a bottom pulley. It's very heavy, which you'd think was counterintuitive for these uh, sort of pulleys. You think lighter would be better, but the way that these um, obviously balance out all the vibrations coming out the crankshaft, etc., is a really good design. So. Looking forward to getting this on the car. It's going to really help. It's not going to hinder. It's not going to make anything worse. So all we can do is help. Um, so that was really worth getting. Uh, got some instructions. They want us to do it exactly how they want it to be done. Um, so I'm going to read them quickly. And get this on the uh, crankshaft. And uh, anyone who knows these knows that they're a brilliant bit of kit. And they should always really go for them on a high performance engine. Right, so another upgrade we're going to be making to the car in the future. And the beauty of running like the Link G4 standalone ECU. Is that we can run a much more modern triggering setup on the crankshaft. So this is the stock Evo crankshaft triggering. So you can see it's basically got four points of reference. One, two, three, four. Four. Now on the modern cars, for fuel economy, for better idling, etc., they have more and more teeth. Now the Z20 Let, which is a crankshaft I've got over here, they have a 36 to 1 triggering. So you can see here, there's 36 teeth, then there's one missing. That's how the crankshaft gets its point of reference. Um, this crankshaft triggering is off of a Group A Evo 6 rally car. Obviously they could run a much better system and they wanted a much more precise crankshaft position. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this one up. It's not going to be straight away. We want to get the car running first. We're going to set it up on this. Then we switch over to this. Um, it's got to be obviously timed right. You've got to take off one of the teeth um, to make sure that it, the uh, ECU has a point of reference one missing to see where the crankshaft position is. And then there's a lot of settings got to be changed inside the ECU. Um, so so that's another upgrade we're going to be in the future. Obviously, going to just start out with this one just to make sure everything's good. See, I'm bolted on bits at the minute, bits that you don't need to see. So uh, basically, that just sits on there like that, and then the crankshaft sits in there in between it, and then the plate just goes through and it picks up either side of that disc. So obviously, as I said, four points of reference as opposed to 18 that it's going to have in the future. And um, I really wanted to see if it could run a 36, but I don't think it can. Right, so I'm going to call it a day on this episode. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, join us in the next episode. I couldn't help but put on the turbo. I ain't seen it on there for so long. If you don't know, we're running FP Black, which is pretty much the biggest stock frame turbo that you could get for these engines. £60 a minute, so should do around 600 horsepower on that turbo, and then we go bigger. So uh, thanks for watching the episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop us a comment in the comment section.